Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me today with something very special and very unique. This is the exact Top Gear reasonably priced car. I'm actually a little bit starstruck seeing this car in real life, having seen it so many times on Top Gear, um, and it's very cool to get up close and personal and also to share this video with you. Of course, we are joined today with the current owner of the car, Lawrence. We'll get him on camera, introduce him, uh, and he can basically talk about the car in general because there's lots of cool stories before we go out in it and experience the exact Kia C apostrophe D from Top Gear. Okay, so we're joined now with Lawrence, the current owner of probably the most famous Kia in the world. <laughs> and this is yeah. the car as well. It's so cool to see this. Um, and you can't call it a Kia seat, can you? You can't. It has to be C apostrophe D. Exactly that. Be. Don't ever forget the apostrophe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Now there is obviously, as you can imagine, some really cool stories with this car. Um, and obviously you're a hive of, of knowledge about it. So uh, yeah, talk to us about this car. I know a little bit about it. So um, yeah, the car was first used from series 15 of the old Top Gear, mm -hmm. and that was 2010 through to 2013. Celebrities such as Tom Cruise, Cameron Diaz, mm -hmm. Matt LeBlanc, drove the C apostrophe D around the track. Yeah. Tom Cruise famously putting the car on two wheels, <laughs> almost that. putting it on its roof. Yeah, yeah. Um, some fun facts. So there were three cars used on the show. There were two manuals and one auto. Yeah. And this car is the auto version. Mm -hmm. It's the only one that's on the road. The other two, I think one's in Bewley and one is in storage, oh, okay. yeah, um, yeah. Bewley Motor Museum. Yeah. So if you swing around, take a look at the license plate, LC10PHF. That is the license plate you always saw on the show, irrespective mm. of whether um, the celebrity was driving the manual or the auto. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the other two cars, wherever they are, are not uh, wearing that license plate. Or if they are, this is the yeah. car that was registered yeah. with that. So it, I suppose in a lot of people's eyes, this is the car that you, you recognize and remember. I exactly, suppose. yeah. So I bought the car the end of November, 2021. I get asked by everybody, where did I buy the car from? How did <laughs> yeah. I find it? There's no glamorous answer. The answer is it was on eBay. It didn't go for a lot, so I did get it for a reasonable price. Yeah. And <laughs> ironically. <laughs> ironically, I wasn't planning on bidding on the car. I just yeah. saw it on eBay, and as we all do, put a watch on it. Yeah, yeah. And I was in the pub after a couple of beers, maybe. Um, I was <laughs> yeah. with a friend, and I said, look, this auction's ending. How hilarious is this? Yeah. And my friend was like, oh, yeah, just buy it. It'll be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't find a reason not to, so I bid for the car. Yeah. The price. I bid, the amount that I bid is what I paid for it. So mm -hmm. I bid £6,250 for it, wow. and that's what I got it for. In fact, to tell a lie, I went to pick the car up. The owner said to me, sorry, it's got no fuel in it at all, and gave me 50 quid back. So, oh, really? Yeah, I was quite happy oh, wow. with that. So it was privately owned before? It was before privately years. owned, yeah. I don't know how that guy managed to get yeah. hold of it, but he wasn't really interested in the car. He didn't no. know the history or anything. He, he just, just thought he was buying a normal Kia Seed. Probably, yeah. I just really wondered why it had a roll cage and bucket <laughs> seats in it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't they definitely don't come like that from factory <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah it's just been a really fun experience owning it i take it out as often as i can co mm. you know cars and coffee meets and things yeah, like that yeah. car shows just because everybody lights up when they see it because yeah. everybody's watched top gear whether you're a exactly. car fan or not yeah absolutely um I let everybody jump in it, get a picture in it, etc. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a, a fun, cool hilarious car. thing to own. It's yeah, cool car, and the fact that it's it's not one which looks like the car; it is the car. Exactly, it um, is the the Top Gear Kia. Yeah. It would be really interesting to see if there's any other Top Gear cars which are privately owned now. Yeah, you know, it's ones true. They did in challenges, or maybe I think some most the of them are probably cars. not road. Well, yeah, that's true. I, I know for a fact that some of the, um, I think it was one of the African specials they did. They're mm -hmm. literally just in a car park in Africa. But yeah, very. It's just so cool, so cool. I it mean, is, isn't it? millions of people watched this car being thrashed around the track. Well, with loads of celebrities behind the wheel. That's right. Um, in inside as well, it, it's kind of as is, really, isn't it? It is. So the car is completely bog standard in terms of anything performance related. Yeah, yeah. The only modifications are the bucket seats, yep. the roll cage, which is a proper roll cage. It's yeah, not it um, just artificial and it's the airbags are disabled because of yeah. the, those things. So yeah, other than that, it's completely bog standard, which yeah. makes for a fun conversation with the insurance <laughs> company once a year. <laughs> yeah. Why have I you got a bog standard Kia that's yeah. got a roll cage? It's in. got a roll cage yeah. in it. But it's cool that they, they kind of left it all in, really. Yeah, so the cars were owned by Kia. They were never owned by the BBC. Oh, okay. And yeah. one of the instructions to Kia 
from the BBC was to keep the interior looking as standard as possible. Ah, Don't okay. just rip the whole interior out yeah, as you would yeah. with a normal track car. Hence why it's like a, a bolt-in cage as such. Rear exactly. Seats are still in. Don't think you'd be able to sit in there though. <laughs> and of course, this one being the auto. So there's only one auto, right? One auto and two, two manuals, manuals yeah. yeah. How cool is that? And obviously you have to put the decal on the door as well. But I mean, exactly. other than that, if that decal wasn't there and if maybe you had some tints on the windows, it would go under the radar, wouldn't it? Completely, yeah. Completely, Completely. under the radar. Um, it's a really fun thing to own. It's not like owning a supercar where you're really careful where you park it and all of that kind <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Yeah. It's, you know, of course I park it on the street. I, I, if it gets a prang, yeah. kind of, so what? Um, yeah, yeah. It's a Kia. I quite often get asked with it being thrashed around a track, what if the engine blows up? Yeah. I'll put another one in it. It'd probably a yeah. hundred pound from a scrapyard or something yeah, like that. So it's, it, yeah. Mechanically as well, it's it's cheap to run. I suppose. Well, I, maybe the manual ones were used a little bit more, but definitely there probably were some incidents where things had to be changed. Obviously, because for the first part of its life, it was driven hard, right? That's right. <laughs> so it did eighteen hundred miles um, during its life on Top Gear. This and that particular was all, car, all around the track. Yeah, and then I bought it on twelve thousand miles. Yeah, and it's now just done over eighteen thousand. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cool. So That's still, still low mileage. It's still a low mileage for car. A yeah, ten car. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And one final thing as well, I spied some signatures on the dash, which is, uh, you've got a bit of a collection. Well going spotted, on. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get a few more. But I've got um, the first one was Ben Collins, who, okay. for those who yeah. don't know, was the Stig. Um, so he signed the dashboard there on the silver part. And then yeah. the one to the left is Tiff Nadell. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people will know him from Fifth Gear. Yeah. But actually, he also presented Top Gear in the very, very yeah, early days. Yeah, so. absolutely, yeah. Well, I'm just very excited to be around this car. The opportunity has arisen that we can go out in it as well. So I think we'll get it fired up. It's obviously a completely standard exhaust. It's not going to sound it that is, much. It is, yeah, but exactly. Go and experience. It's probably the least hot, hot hatch you've had on your channel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, but, yeah. yeah. And go and experience this thing. Oh yeah, there we go. It makes a bit more noise when you put your foot down, that's about it. <laughs> was that, that, flat that, that, to the floor. that was flat to the floor, yeah. Probably the slowest car that's ever been on the chat. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't really argue with that to be yeah. honest. Yeah. But it's cool, it's so cool to be out in the top gear reasonably priced car. <laughs> oh the grips well. It does. <laughs> that is brilliant. It's everything she's got. That's what, 50, 60? Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love it how it's, it's like proper like race car spec in here. 100% necessary. But there are a few quirks in here. This up here, we think is some sort of light, isn't it really? It's it is, a, yeah. It's a working map work. light, but I yeah. don't know the history of that, why it's there. Yeah. Can't think why it would have been there on the TV show because they didn't film this car at night. But... Yeah, yeah, that's true. And a couple of quirks with the cage kind of getting in the way so the sun visors they, they, don't, they work don't work well, they no. don't work very well and of course you can't get in the glove box as well because of True. the cage down so there so i don't know what it is that's rattling in there if you can hear that on the video i apologize there's something rattling in the glove box Literally. but without dismantling the whole interior of the car i will never know <laughs> yeah i bet you get some looks in it though yeah, on the motorway in particular, when people get a chance to really look at it, yeah. you know, not just driving past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like get a lot of thumbs up. Car and they see the cage in the back, may, they maybe recognise the play. I think, crikey. Well, the best thing is, people see the roll cage in the bucket seat and they try and race you. <laughs> this is slower than a standard Kia because you're carrying all this metal that's work true. around with you. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, that's true. Because obviously, engine wise, completely standard. Everything is standard. Everything. So it's, it's not a fast car, I'll get that out of the way straight away. Yeah. And because it's 2010 automatic gearbox, not a modern yeah. DSG type thing, it's quite slow on the gear changes. I think there's only three, four gears in there. Oh, really? So wow. I think so, yeah, it's a really old fashioned auto gearbox. So. <laughs> yeah. so I suppose this specific car right here that we're in is for the celebrities who maybe couldn't drive a manual or they just wanted an exactly. automatic. Exactly, yeah. Or maybe if the weather conditions were really bad, they went to the auto, I don't know. Exactly. The, the manual cars did a lot more actual miles. That's right. So this car, uh, yeah, did 1,800 miles during its time on Top Gear in wow. total. 1,800 it was very hard miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was obviously brand new when it was delivered. Yeah. It's 
with like an enthusiastic owner and you're taking it to places for people to see like you've taken it to Clarkson's farm <laughs> I have yeah that that was the main thing when I bought it it is not going to be a garage queen yeah there's no reason for it to be it's yeah. a Kia yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um and I just love it when I park it up somewhere or take it to a cars and coffee meet mm. something like that and the, just the attention it gets and everybody's smiling everybody yeah. goes oh it's the car off top gear yeah because it is just a Kia and not a Ferrari, mm. of course I'll leave it open, I'll let people get in it, take pictures, get yeah. strapped into the seats. Yeah, you know, yeah. that, that's really why I enjoy owning it. What it's all about, yeah. yeah. And you complete, you found it on a complete whim. Like, complete whim, <laughs> as we all do, eBay. browse eBay, yeah. find a cool car, you watch it. I had no intention of buying it. Yeah. Um, until the night the auction was ending and it was so cheap and I was gently persuaded that it might be a good idea to buy it. I had no reason not to. Other than I was moving to Germany in a few months. So oh, really? I should say I don't live in the UK. I now live yeah. in Germany. I was already committed to moving to Germany, but I thought I'm still buying it. Yeah, um, yeah. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, it? exactly. Have you got any plans for it as such, I suppose? Maybe take it over to Germany? Yeah, I thought my autobahn, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Top speed test. I was going to try and get it into three figures. Yeah, um, try. <laughs> try. Everybody keeps suggesting it'd be a good idea to take it around the Nürburgring. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how good of an idea that is, but you'd have a lot of fun. So, yeah, absolutely. It'll, yeah. it'll get a lot of attention as well. I'd quite like to do that. Yeah. So road trips and just more little car shows, really. Mm. You know, just getting people seeing the car. Yeah, yeah. That's really the plan, yeah. plan for the year. Oh, that's really and cool. I would actually like to hear in the comments, what do you guys think I should do with this car? Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. Now, I know what they're the all going to say make it 700 horsepower yeah. and rear wheel drive like, yeah come on calm down everyone we've seen enough powerful cars on the channel lately <laughs> exactly but so uh, i we're not doing any of that but um yeah, yeah. Keep, keep it kind of as is exactly i want to hear from everybody else what what yeah, do you guys absolutely. think we should be doing with this car yeah. going forward see if you can wangle a a, a a trip to dunsfold take it around there that would be cool yeah this is a slow bit now. You can't, might not be able to see this, but we're going uphill. It's not a steep hill, but <laughs> it struggles with hills. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the car notices. <laughs> no, it's an absolute pleasure to be in this car, though. I am, uh, yeah, geeking out big time because I'm sure I'm not the only one who spent well every Sunday watching Top Gear. Really? Yeah. Especially in the era of this specific car, um, and all, all the famous people to think that were sat where we're sat now, yeah. learning how to drive it and not crash it very much. <laughs> That's right, yeah. But, um, but yeah, a huge thank you to yourself uh, for bringing it down and, and letting me share it on the channel. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people are gonna find it very interesting, the fact that it's still out there and being used and enjoyed as, as intended, really. Um, so of course, if you do wanna learn more about the car and Lawrence's activities and journeys with it, then I will leave his Instagram linked down in the description down below. For me today, that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like. Make sure to subscribe for all the adventures. Stay tuned.